Hello, hello, and welcome back to Girl We Gotta Talk. I'm your host, Elena Jakes, and welcome back to another episode, and welcome back from summer break. I'm so happy to be back on the podcast. We took a little bit of a break for about a month or so, and it was definitely needed. It was actually unintentional, but um, once a lot of stuff just kind of was popping up, I thought maybe I'll just take a minute um, for myself and kind of just relax for a minute. Um, And so that's what I did. And I'm going to kind of get into where I was, what was really going on, um, some updates in my life, some transitions in my life. But before we jump into today's episode, I wanted to introduce a new segment that we'll have on the podcast, which is the Fast 15. Um, Basically, when I first started my podcast back in 2020, A lot of it was centered around pop culture, and I basically implemented that into every episode, and then I was posting regularly, like, breaking news. Um, If you guys have been around since then, I'm sure you guys remember, like, the Instagram stories that I would post, basically breaking news and pop culture, sports, um, mostly pop culture, though, and I had a ton of of Instagram um, posts just about like celebrity gossip, celebrity news, breakups, makeups, things like that, engagements, all that good stuff. And I was so involved with that. And I think since then, it's kind of trickled. And um, I don't know, I miss it. I feel like my life's been so busy that I'm not super up to date all the time on pop culture. So I'm not like constantly updating my Instagram or the podcast's Instagram, but I, I'm i still in it and I still check my phone at night and I'm still very much aware of what's going on. I just don't always have the time to like update you guys. So instead, we're going to implement the Fast 15 and basically the first 15 minutes of every episode, we'll kind of run through what's been going on in pop culture, the latest news, um, and stuff like that. So I thought I'd kick it off with this solo episode and we will jump in. I will say today's news is a little bachelorette or I guess bachelor nation focused and some Bravo housewife focused. So it won't always be like that. Um, It'll just depend on like what the news is that day or that week. But um, for today, it is definitely housewife and bachelor nation news. So let's jump into the fast 15. So, to kick things off, I, first of all, if you are new to this podcast, I'm Elena and I am a Bravo fanatic. I watch basically every Housewife um, franchise. I watch Below Deck, Vanderpump Rules, Southern Charm, all of the spinoff shows. I am watching The Ultimate Girls Trip, um, the first season and this current season. Like, I'm in it and I love it so much. I think when a lot of guys talk about like how into sports they are, like Bravo is my sport. And I could talk about it for days. Like, honestly, I should have just made this podcast a Bravo-focused podcast because I'm just, like, so enamored with it and so involved with, like, everything going on. And so that's just a little preface before we jump into the news because this first story is about Taylor Armstrong, who was formerly a Beverly Hills housewife um, back in the day, like early, early episodes of Beverly Hills. And she was recently on the Ultimate Girls Trip, which if you guys are watching that, I think I'm watching it on Peacock. Um, It streams on Peacock. And I will say this season isn't that great. It's like Vicky, Tamara, Taylor, um, shoot, I'm forgetting the name, Phaedra, um, I'm blanking, I'm blanking, and it's at, um, Dorinda's house in the Berkshires, so it's definitely, it's an interesting one, this one is, like, all ex-housewives, I think that's why it's, like, not as great as the first season one, first season was, which was, like, Teresa, Melissa, like, all of the big names and the OGs, so a little bit different of a vibe, but anyways, Taylor Armstrong was on this season, and I think she was really able to, like, I don't know, show us herself again and show us herself as this woman that has just really been through the ringer, if you guys didn't know or don't remember her. Back when she was um, on Beverly Hills, she was basically 
going through like the worst part of her life. Um, she went through a divorce and her husband unfortunately committed suicide and it was just a lot was going on. And I think to have cameras in your face during a time like that, like I can't imagine, um, number one, going through that alone, but then having it all basically on film for people to watch all over the world, like is a whole nother level. Um, and so I think it was really nice to see her again, to see how she's been, like what she's been up to, how she's been. And, um, I was really happy that she was on the season because I think a lot of people like forget about her and forget about like all the stuff that she went through. So anyways, back to the story of what this is. Um, Taylor Armstrong is going to be the first woman to move franchises and she's actually going to be on the Real Housewives of Orange County, which I think if you watch the Housewives, Orange County is just absolutely in the toilet. Like, or, or yeah, Orange County is absolutely in the toilet. I don't know what I just said. Um, and I, I will say Taylor will be a friend of, so she's not going to be a main focus, but she'll be, I'm, I'm curious to know because I know Tamara's coming back if she'll be more of like a friend of Tamara and, um, cause they really bonded through this ultimate girls trip. I feel like I'm not sure, but, um, I'm interested and I'm actually really happy that she's joining Orange County. I don't know how she's going to fit in with the ladies just yet. Like I'm trying to visualize like who she's going to latch on to. Um, I know we still have, like, Emily, Gina, and Heather. I think Shannon. I think they're all still on it. It's just, like, a very interesting franchise. I'm not loving it. Um, I know Jen Armstrong and... Oh, no, I'm forgetting her name. The one that went through the really nasty divorce. No one's here to, like, help me. I can't think of it. But they both will not be returning. So, I think throwing Taylor Armstrong in will be nice. It'll be refreshing. Um, and it's so interesting that she's, like, hopping franchises because normally... I mean, this doesn't happen. So, super cool. Good for Taylor. Happy for her and all that she's doing now. Um, okay, moving on to the next story. Madison Pruitt is now engaged to Grant Trout. So, Madison Pruitt was on Peter's season of The Bachelor years ago. Um, she, I guess, like, that season was just an absolute train wreck. So, he picked Hannah Ann. Madison was the runner-up. And then him and Hannah Ann, like broke up and then he went back to Madison's place. They started dating again. The mom hated her. Um, and it was just like very, it was a terrible season. Let's just say that. But anyways, Madison Pruitt since then has really like been in the limelight. She's really remained, um, kind of front and center. She's done a lot of stuff with the church. I know she's very religious. She does a lot of, like, TED Talk, like, ministry things like that. Um, she's friends with, like, really big YouTubers. Like, she's still very much relevant. Um, and recently, and I know there was, like, stories with, like, her and Connor Saley, but recently she started dating this guy, Grant Trout, like I said. So, I, like, I was shocked when this came. I mean, actually, was I shocked? I don't know. But this came out on Monday night, I think. And I was shocked in the sense of they have not been dating that long. And I know, like, especially with someone in the public eye, like, you probably will be dating this person for quite some time before you post them. With her, I'm not sure how long she waited until she posted him. Um, but she first posted him in May, and it's August. So I'm just like, that's really fast. Um, and so... I did some research and People Magazine did a whole story on who Grant is as a person and I just want to read a little bit about what they said because I think it like really gives us some context as to like obviously who he is but like also their relationship. So this is what People Magazine wrote. They said, um, 26 year old speaker and minister to athletes and churches, Grant Trout made his relationship with Madison Pruitt on Instagram official on May 5th. Okay, so I was right. After dating for five months, they both posted sweet carousels to their respective pages with heartfelt captions detailing their love for each other. Okay, so that confirms they were dating five months prior. That's good to know. Fast forward three months, the couple got engaged on August 31st. That's not right. It's not August 31st. August 1st, I think, is what they meant to say. Huh? This is incorrect. Okay. Um, after dating less, after dating for less than a year, Trout proposed in a romantic setting in the at the Breakers Hotel in Palm Beach, Florida. 
Um, quote, Grant was waiting for me and led me out to the beach where he had candles and flowers and a Bible with my name on it, Pruitt told people, and the ring of my dreams. He was definitely worth the wait. Now that Pruitt has found her person, here's everything you need to know about Trout. Okay, so this is what I was learning. I was like, who is this man anyways? Um, so he's from Dallas, Texas. This is what really got me. So he's from Dallas, Texas. Um, he played basketball and he played football. This is what got me. He's the son of billionaire Kenny Trout. So his father, Kenny Trout, is the founder of long-distance phone company XL Communications. He took the company public in 1996 and later sold it to Teleglobe for $3.5 billion in 1998. Um, so he reinvested the profits in stocks, bonds, and horses. <laughs> and horses. Furthermore, he's the owner of Windstar Farm in Kentucky. The company is known for its outstanding breeding of thoroughbreds and including including a Kentucky Derby winner. So I thought that was so interesting. I had no idea. Um, he's a former college athlete as well. He played basketball at the University of California in Santa Barbara on a full ride scholarship. And let's see, he's obviously very religious, which I know is very important to Madison. So I'm happy that they um, both have that in common. They're able to um, do that together. And yeah, very, very interesting. So happy for her. I mean, the photos, if you guys don't follow her on Instagram, go check them out. They're absolutely stunning. And I saw on TikTok that a lot of people, and honestly, in the comments on Instagram, there are a lot of people really speculating when people get engaged and I mean, this is fair. When people get engaged and they are in like the most beautiful dress, like I just, you think to yourself, like how did she know to get so dressed up and look so pretty for like a surprise proposal like this? And so I guess like she was under the impression that she was going to a birthday party with her friends. Um, and then like 30 minutes prior, her mom and her sisters were like, no, we have this dress for you. Like, Grant has a surprise for you. You have to go walk to the beach. So, like, she was surprised, like, 30 minutes beforehand. So, I'm sure she knew it was coming. I'm sure she knew what the surprise was. But, yeah, they had, a like, a dress change for her so that she was wearing, like, a pretty dress for the proposal photos. So, like, I like that we got background on that because I know a lot of people do speculate, like, oh, she definitely knew. Like, she put that dress on because, like, she had a feeling or, like, he told her or, you know, whatever it is. Um... That stuff is just always so interesting to me, especially because, like, we're definitely in the age, at least I am, of, like, everybody is getting engaged right now. Like, everybody I know is getting engaged right now. Um, and so, basically, anytime I go on Instagram, I'm like, oh, another proposal, another proposal. But it does run through your brain a little bit. You're like, wait, how did they look so cute? Like, oh, they must have been, like, they must have had a feeling or how did they, how did the guy surprise her? Stuff like that. So, um... Anyways, definitely interesting. Um, happy for them both. They seem like really happy with each other. So that's all you can really hope. I will say there is one more story sort of related to the last one. And it's Bachelor Nation. It's Bachelor Nation engagement. Get ready. Drum roll, please. Bennett is engaged. If you guys remember Bennett, he was from, oh man, whose season was he from? Was that Claire Crawley's season? like Claire Tasha season? I think so. So he is engaged to his girlfriend who honestly he seems to be he seemed to be dating for quite some time now, Emily Chen. She's a yoga teacher. She's a huge following on Instagram. Very aesthetically pleasing um like yoga videos and just travel photos. They seem to be like really living their best lives. I'm not sure how they met, but they've been traveling together for what seems like forever. Um they are absolutely just beautiful people. Like, basically, Bennett's reputation on the show was just, like, he was super stuck up. He went to Harvard. He just, like, came across like he was better than everybody else. And I honestly, I don't think that's how he really is. I think that he's, like, a pretty cool guy. Just, I mean, I don't know him at all. <laughs> but I feel like he's, like, I don't know. When people go on reality TV, like, obviously, they're going to spin it some way or exaggerate, like, someone's personality. And I feel like that's probably what happened there. But he seems super happy. The ring is super gorgeous. I mean, like, I mean, what more can you ask for? These photos I'm looking at right now are stunning. They posted, like, I guess engagement photos. And they're just running in a field with mountains behind them. Like, it's just picture perfect. So, yeah, a lot of engagement stories. And um, happy for everyone involved. 
And that was your fast 15. Okay, so let's jump into where I've been, what I've been up to, why it's been so long since the last episode, all of that good stuff. So I, okay, where do I start? I guess I'll start back in, hmm. Okay, so I'll start, (laughs) I'm like thinking. So I'll start back in April. So back in April, I was visiting my long distance boyfriend. My boyfriend and I, if you're new here, I've been dating. Um, We just hit four and a half years. And basically the majority of our relationship, we've been dating long distance. He's only three hours away from me. It's not like we're in different states or countries or anything like that, but um, we have been dating distance for quite some time, and he's the best. He's actually been on a few episodes where we've talked about that, so if you are in a long distance relationship or you are about to be in a long distance relationship, definitely check that out. We talk a lot about how we've like dealt with that, the struggles that come with it, and like how we've just been able to like manage um, and like be successful. Um, but anyways, I was visiting him, um, for a couple days and on the last day that I was there, I was like, you know what, let's do like, let's get food. It was a Friday night. I was like, let's get food from our favorite little burrito place in town. Um, let's make some drinks and we can have like dinner and drinks up on the rooftop of your apartment building. So it was like, honestly, just saying that now it's like, that's so ideal. I love that. Like what a vibe. And so, um, I ran out and I got the burritos for us and I was headed home and I got into a car accident. Someone actually hit me and I obviously, I so I've never been in a car accident. So I was absolutely terrified. I was shaking. Um, luckily, I was okay. I wasn't super injured. I mean, my neck was pretty tight like the next day, but like no visible injuries, like thank God, and no injuries to the other party as well. So I was shaking though. I was freaking out. Um, called my mom immediately. Like I was like, I got to do an accident. I got to do an accident. Um, and so got out of the car and like did the whole insurance thing with the, the lady that had hit me. Um, and it just like really brought me down. I mean, my car was pretty damaged and I was just like, this was supposed to be like such a good night. Like this sucks. Um, But anyways, that I feel like I'm starting with that story because I feel like from that moment, like everything started to shift in my life and like changes were happening. So I start with that because since then, everything has just been like craziness. Um, I had to like basically duct tape my car back up because I was driving home the next day. And um, I so I drove home with like that car and just like with everything going on right now, it just took a really long time for me to like basically like get it like get my car fixed get my car into the shop to begin with and just like all the insurance stuff it just was taking so long um and so recently I think it was like the end of June so like if that tells you anything um I got a new car um I found out once my car got into the shop that like it was actually um totaled and there was like no way that they could fix it so I didn't get to say goodbye to my car. I had this car in college. Her name was Savannah and (laughs) I loved her. She was a little like Hyundai Sonata. She was great to me and I just have a lot of like memories in that car. So I was really sad to like not be able to like say goodbye. I know that's so stupid to say, but I like, I guess all of a sudden needed to basically buy a new car. So that was a crazy moment in my life because I was not mentally prepared to do that. Um, But yeah, I ended up buying a new car, which was a huge like milestone for me to be able to do that. And um, I was like proud of myself that I was able to do that. I um, went with my dad. We went to like basically test drive a bunch of cars and I found one that I loved. I haven't named her yet. Um, but she's so cute and I'm so happy with it and yeah, so that's super crazy. Um, and then what else happened to me? Oh, I, I feel like this summer, I was telling somebody recently, I feel like this summer's really just like flown by and I haven't done anything, but when I was like coming up with like stuff to talk about today and like trying to remember everything that had happened in the last couple months, I realized I've really done a lot of stuff and I think I do that to myself a lot where I'm like, oh, I just feel like I haven't done anything. Like, I'm not, like, living an exciting life. 
I hate that because I think that really stems from social media standards and I know that like so many of us like it can be so easy to like compare and look at someone's post of them traveling and be like wow like I'm not doing that that's so cool and I'm so lame like I'm sitting at home and like as I was writing up all these things that I did this summer like I wanted to just like kick myself I'm like girl you've done so much and also like it's not a competition to be honest like I could have done nothing this summer and I should be okay with that like it's okay if you're not traveling everywhere like it's okay if you're not seeing your friends all the time um I think it's just important to like make make the most of your time so whether that's like going just grabbing lunch by yourself or um just like calling a friend like if you're not able to do all of those things that you see other people doing online like it's actually okay and I had to tell myself that when I was writing this stuff up because yes Maybe I haven't traveled everywhere and I haven't gone to different countries this summer, but I've had so many fun, like honestly, core memories this summer that I'm super grateful for. So I don't know why I was like throwing a little fit to myself um, because I've really had like so much fun and I'm about to tell you everything I've been doing. <laughs> so, um, so shortly after I bought my new car, I had to go to a bachelorette party. It was actually my, so my best friend from childhood. We've known each other since we were like four or five. Um, Addie, she is getting married this fall. So we had her bachelorette party this summer and it was so much fun. Um, We went to the town that her and her husband or like soon to be husband have um, where they met. And so it was super fun to like go back and go to a bunch of bars that like, they used to go to and stuff like that and just to honestly be with everybody again was really cool um and like see our siblings and just the bridal party it was actually a joint party so it was like the bridesmaids and the groomsmen which honestly was super fun I felt like that was super cool because then now we all like are you know we know each other now and so when the wedding comes we're all gonna know each other and it's gonna be so much fun I'm so excited but um I had this like crazy like moment to myself because I was like oh my god this is my childhood best friend this is the girl that I grew up with I we went to middle school together we were so close in middle school and so close in high school and so close when we both went to different schools she went to the naval academy and um I went to a school in central (laughs) it sounds so lame she went to the naval academy and I went to a school in the middle of nowhere in Virginia um but through all of these different stages of our lives, we've remained so close and talked to each other all the time. And I don't know, I just had this like crazy moment where I was like, oh my God, this is so wild that this person that's like been so prevalent in my life is like hitting this milestone and like getting married. And it's just so exciting. And like, I'm so happy to see, to see her so happy. Um, and it's just a cool moment. And I think that's probably going to happen with each friend that gets married because, I have so many amazing friends that I've been so grateful to be so close to and been through so many different, like, transitions. Um, And I think, like, the moment that I see her walk down the aisle, like, I'll probably literally just combust. Like, I'm going to cry and it's going to be crazy. But I'm so happy for her. And I think, like, at this age when you see all your friends getting married, it's just a crazy experience because you've just, you've been through so much with them and, like, ugh, like, I'm just so happy for her happiness and yeah so much fun oh my gosh um and what all what else did I do this summer so I went on a quick little weekend vacation actually with my boyfriend um and I highly highly recommend doing this if you can take taking a weekend trip to honestly wherever you want like whatever is your cup of tea I'm a big beach girl so we took a little weekend beach trip just the two of us and like I said we're long distance so it was really nice to one, obviously be together, but just like have no other distractions. Um, I feel like every time that him and I are visiting each other, obviously we have our jobs to do and we're working a lot um, or we're hanging out with other people because like once we do get together, it's a lot of like everyone else wants to see everybody. And so it's like becoming a group thing, which is totally fine. Really grateful for that. But I think this was like a really nice opportunity for us to just like be alone and just have the time to ourself it was probably like even just thinking about it right now I'm just like at peace because it was probably the most peaceful most relaxing vacation I've ever been on and I can say that with a fact as a fact because I 
we had literally no plan and I loved that and we're both big planners but we were like okay let's just go and do whatever we want so we got a little Airbnb like condo townhouse vibe um which was a very very quick walk to the beach which is so nice it's probably like a three minute walk um and we yeah we like brought our cooler we actually found this like cute little local sandwich shop down the street from our Airbnb so like I think both of our beach days we went there and brought sandwiches to the beach and it was so good like oh my god they're so good so we would just like would sit at the beach all day and like there was really no schedule and then whenever we felt like going back to the room like we would go back and then we'd get ready for dinner and it was just like we had no reservations it was just we were going wherever we felt like going um we weren't like on anyone else's time but ours and it was just really nice we also we also got photos taken um the first night we got into the beach we had this photographer come out which was she was such a gem i'll tag her in the show notes um her name's autumn and she met us at the beach it was like sunset it was absolutely stunning and okay so (laughs) if you follow me on instagram on my personal instagram Um, I'm sure you've already seen the photos. They look a lot like engagement photos, if I'm being honest. Um, And I got so many messages when these were posted. And I think there was like a lot of speculation that I was engaged, but we are not engaged. They were just photos because I genuinely like, I'm a huge photo person. Like if anyone knows me, I'm always taking photos of like things that are going on. I'm always trying to get pictures and like not for selfish reasons, reasons, but like genuinely because I'm like really enjoying where I'm what I'm doing I just want to document it like I've always been that way I I'm not I also don't try to be annoying about it at all but like I'll just snap a bunch of photos and like I don't know I like that um that's just like who I am but when I'm spending time with TJ and it's just us two it's really hard because all we have is selfies but I want to document the moment like I'm always like oh like we're having so much fun like can we take a quick pic and like remember this And all we have, at least for the last, like, year and a half, are selfies because when we do hang out, it is just us, like, and I know there are some instances where we're, like, we're in group scenarios and people could take photos of us, but, like, I don't know, in those moments, I'm very much, like, trying to enjoy it and, anywho, I'm gonna stop rambling. I thought it would be a good idea to get, like, a photographer and just take cute, nice, quality photos of us so that I don't feel the need to pull out my phone at every given moment um, and try and document what's going on because I have these nice photos. So I just thought it would be nice that we could do them maybe like once a year um, and we could do different locations and stuff, but just something to like look back on. And I think especially because that vacation was so great and so high up on our list of like trips we've taken together that looking back at those photos are going to be really nice and I think it's going to like help us remember like that weekend and I don't know it was really cool so I will list I will tag her um the photographer in the show notes if you're interested or if you're in the Virginia area um definitely reach out to her because she was so sweet so great made us feel really really comfortable and I mean that was our first time we've ever done that so we um she let us do whatever we wanted so that it was natural but she I was also like please like if I don't look if I look stiff or if I don't look natural please help me and guide us because we don't know what we're doing um but she had so many great tips she was just so talented so good at her job so I'll tag her in the show notes down below for sure um and then yeah the rest of the summer has just been honestly just trying to spend time with um my roommates and best friends and like I said TJ my boyfriend um trying to see family as much as I can and just really trying to like soak up this like I was gonna say great weather but lately it's been so (laughs) miserably hot um but I do love summer I think summer is probably my favorite season and Oh, it's just so nice. So, yeah, just trying to, like, make the most of it. We've gone to a couple concerts. I'm a big country music girl, so we went to a couple country concerts, and that was super fun. Um, I, I've also just tried to, like, really take it easy, especially with this month of the summer break that I took off. I, um, I really felt like I needed to get my creative juices back. I felt like for a while... I don't know like I felt like for a while that I was just I was just like bleh if that makes sense um I 
didn't feel like confident, not confident, but I didn't feel like super, I should say passionate about the stuff that I was putting out there with the podcast. And I, um, the whole reason I started this podcast was because I was passionate about it and because I love having this creative outlet. I love like creating a community that people and women feel safe in and, um, I wanted an opportunity to like meet and chat with other people and so if I'm ever getting to a point where like I don't love it and I'm feeling like gross about like myself and what I'm doing then like I just have to take a step back and so I use that time to do just that um and man like after like a week or two weeks I was like okay I'm back like I miss it and I started brainstorming a bunch of stuff um I was I've been recording episodes with guests like crazy I have so many like amazing people coming on you guys I'm so excited um for the next couple of episodes and yeah I've just been like I've been back in it and I'm so happy to be back and I think it was really really nice that I took this little break I'm sorry that it was like so long but like I said the episodes coming up are going to be so much fun. Like, I'm really excited for you guys to hear them. Um, and yeah, I guess the last thing I'll say that I was doing while I was gone, um, I actually quit my corporate job. Um, surprise, surprise. If you don't follow me on my personal Instagram, you probably didn't know that. Um, I haven't talked too much about it publicly or like really to anyone, but like my close circle of friends, just because, it was just such a crazy time. But yeah, at the end of June, I wrapped up um, working at my corporate, jo- corporate job. I had been working there for two and a half years. And honestly, I really liked it. It was a great job. I had a great boss, a great team of honestly, my whole team was women, which was super nice. I loved it. And we were all pretty much the same age, which was so cool. Um, and they were amazing and great people to work with. Honestly, I have no complaints at all. Um, and I learned so much. I really felt like I grew in that role. Um, but I basically, long story short, I had an opportunity kind of come my way and, um, I decided that it was an opportunity that I wanted to take and, um, that this opportunity would not probably ever come again. So I ended up leaving. I put my two weeks in and I left and um, I've been in this sort of transition moment where I'm like now starting my new role and getting acclimated with the new job and um, I won't say too much um, just yet but I am working in podcasting just at a really high level and it's so crazy to say that. I, I don't know. This opportunity came to me and I felt like it was just like such a full circle moment um and sidebar I will say if you guys don't already know I started my own company called Purpose Media I started it in like October of 2021 but officially started like ramping things up in January of this year and I've worked really hard at it I've had multiple clients basically I work with small business owners to help promote their brand, their company. I do a lot of videography, social media management, consulting, things like that. Um, And so actually, if you are a small business owner or you have a company that you're looking to um, expand or you need some social media help, stuff like that, definitely reach out. I will also list that in the show notes below so you guys can just um, reach out there. But I started that because I just like, I love, first of all, I have so many people that I know that have started businesses and that that in itself is so cool to me and so badass and it's a lot harder than people I think give credit to and um but a lot of people start businesses because they're passionate about that said business or that said industry and they're not necessarily knowledgeable or keen on how to use social media or how to utilize um social media branding and and like marketing your company and stuff like that so that's kind of where I come in with Purpose Media and it's been so great I've worked with so many incredible people and businesses um and it's so crazy to say that I'm like a founder of a company and I'm I'm definitely proud of like where I've come and since I've started I've definitely grown as a businesswoman but I yeah going back to this I felt like it was such a full circle moment because I felt like it was 
my the business side of me and the marketing social media side of me and then being a host of a podcast both things were coming together into one role and I felt like I don't know it was just like one of those things where you're like wow this is I don't know it was just crazy I'm not even explaining this well but it was a crazy moment I was so grateful for the opportunity to come my way and I was so grateful to talk to everyone and have those interviews and um yeah it was a great experience and I just felt like it was one of those things that I needed to take um and so I'm so grateful for my last job I think being in the corporate world you learn so much um and my boss taught me so much and my team and just working in in that field I learned a lot and so I'm very grateful for that opportunity but I'm so excited for this new opportunity and what's to come with that and just growing more um, sort of in this role. So yeah, that's probably the biggest update. I had to save it for the end. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to this next year and I don't know, growing more. Um, and I guess with that, I just felt like with this break off, the summer break, I had sort of like a reflection period where um, I think when I got this job, I had that aha moment. I had that like, wow, like you did this, you got yourself here, you should be proud of it because I think the imposter syndrome came back. And I, if you guys aren't familiar with imposter syndrome, it's basically just like you not thinking that you're good enough even though you are in lamest terms. But um, I... I had sort of like that, you know, that that doubt creeped in and I I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be like good enough for this or if like, I don't know if this is like right for me, if I'm going to be successful or like whatever it was. I had the reflection moment of you did this. You worked hard and you got yourself here and you should be happy for yourself and you should acknowledge that. And I think so many of us have that like, that doubt in the back of our heads and I think it's normal to have the doubt in the back of your head but I think it's so important to have the confidence in yourself and to acknowledge like the hard work that you've put into things and to know that you can do anything you put your mind to and that's so cheesy ew but it's true and I just I don't know I had this moment of like wow you've really like done all these things and you are doing the damn thing like you're doing it so Anyways, I am just so grateful for this past month. I'm so grateful to be back um, recording podcasts for you guys. Like I said, I have so many guests coming on that I think you guys are going to love. And they're all different episodes, but they're so, I don't know. I just like, I really love the last couple of episodes, so I think you guys will too. And I'm just excited. I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. And, um looking forward to chatting with you guys and to wrap things up um i posted on my instagram a q a and if you guys had any questions for me that i would answer them on the podcast today so let's jump into those so the first question is how are you and your boyfriend are you still dating long distance um yes um first of all thanks for asking I love when people ask about him because for a while there like you guys were absolutely obsessed with him um which I thought was so funny and I loved it but yeah he's he is good we are good um we are still doing long distance I think we're only going to be doing long distance for about another year so this time next year um I think we'll have something different to say about that but yeah we're, he's good we are good um, I'll be seeing him, I guess, the day this comes out, and I am so excited for that. We lo- like, I really look forward to, like, our trips together. It's This is not a trip, but, like, visits, I guess, um, and we're trying to make the most of it before his season starts back up. He works in sports broadcasting and works for a university, so he's super busy, like, come end of August um, when everyone comes back to school, so... Yes, to answer your question, we are good. We are still dating long distance, but hopefully not for too much longer. Are you a fan of J-Lo and Ben Affleck's marriage? Oh my God, this question. Okay, so we actually talk about this in an upcoming episode. Um, So there's a little sneak peek there. But I, okay, 
not really like okay I'm not really the biggest fan of the two of them together just because of the history that they've had and um I'm just also really still mad at A-Rod for whatever happened with that um I felt like A-Rod and J-Lo were just like the it couple and he just talked to some ladies and screwed that one up for himself so still mad at him for that um and I just like for me Ben Affleck, like, really broke J-Lo's heart years ago, and I think, like, yes, you can grow as people, but, like, and maybe grow from that, like, and get over it in a sense, but I just think that if someone ever did me that dirty, like, I don't think I'd ever be able to go back to that, um, that's just my personal opinion, so I wasn't thrilled that they got married. I also thought it was a little strange that they did Vegas, maybe because she's just over it, and I think she was probably planning the big wedding with A-Rod, so that probably just, like, really tainted that experience for her, and she was like, fuck it, like, let's just go to Vegas and do the damn thing, um, but yeah, not the biggest fan, not the biggest fan. Um, okay, next question, are you watching The Bachelorette? If so, thoughts? Um, I'm actually not watching The Bachelorette. I know that in past seasons on this podcast, I've talked a ton about The Bachelorette or The Bachelor or Paradise even, but this season and honestly, the last few seasons I haven't watched. I think I'm just really over how fake it can be and how fake it can come across on TV. Um, and I also think there's something to say about like it still being on like a cable channel and not a streaming service and I know that you can get it on Hulu but I think it just the whole like show to me feels outdated um and I think with like so many other shows with like Love Island and Too Hot to Handle and like all these other like love reality shows um that The Bachelorette just seems so outdated and they're not like doing anything to like make it fresh which I know they added two Bachelorettes this season which I don't love that, um, but yeah, I, I'm not into it anymore. I think I pretty much stopped watching when it was, like, Michelle's season. I watched Katie's season, and I got, like, pretty fired up about it, um, but then since then, not really. Like, I, I'm just kind of over it. I'm sorry to say. I'm kind of over it, um, so no, I'm sorry. I, I, I probably, like, at least with people, like, I mean, at the beginning of this episode, I talked a lot about, like, two Bachelor Nation couples, so at least on, like, Instagram and stuff and, like, stuff like that with, like, the Fast 15, I'll probably bring up some Bachelor Nation stories, but, like, I'm not gonna do updates on, like, episode to episode. I'm not, like, I'm just kind of past it. I'm sorry. Not, like, not to say if you're watching it, it's bad. Like, that's bad. But it's just, like, not for me anymore. Plus, I watch way too much TV and I have so many other shows to keep up with. I can't watch a two-hour show every day, like, or every week. That's crazy. (laughs) Um, next question. Favorite place you've traveled to this summer? Ooh. I, like I said, I haven't traveled to too many places this summer. Um... I will actually say, I'll say Annapolis, Maryland, which is so random, but it's where, um, we had that bachelorette party, and I just feel like Annapolis is, like, not talked about a lot, and it is so fun, and it's so beautiful there, um, and we had, like, a boat day one day, and that was super nice, like, I think it was just, like, a really beautiful town, so I would say Annapolis, Maryland, what a random ass answer. Current favorite show, ooh, um... Okay, this is going to be kind of random. I am watching For All Mankind. It's actually on Apple TV, and my boyfriend got me into it. He um, told me about it, and I think he had watched, like, only, like, four or five episodes before he was like, Elena, you need to see this show. Like, you're going to die. And at first, like, my boyfriend's definitely into, like, more boy, in my opinion, nerdy stuff that makes sense if he's listening he's gonna just like kill me for saying that because he would disagree that it's nerdy but um you know he likes his boy shows and so when he told me about it I was like eh, I don't really want to watch it but it is so good it's so heartfelt it's like I've cried to it I've like s- just been like so happy about it it's incredible it's basically about um NASA and like their space program back in it starts like in the in the 50s and 60s um in that first season and it's like all about like 
how they try and get to the moon and try to get out to, like, these planets. And it's crazy. And then, like, each season it jumps to a different decade um, with, like, all the same characters and stuff. And it's so good. Like, 12 out of 10 show. Apple TV for all mankind to watch it. Next question. Can you share any upcoming guests with the eye emoji? <laughs> um... I don't know. Okay, I don't really like sharing upcoming guests because I think it's, like, a fun surprise. Um, but actually, that's a good point. Like, should I share... So, every episode comes out on Wednesday. Should I share, like, who it's going to be on Monday? Would that get you guys more excited? I don't know. I've always just, like, hard launched it on, like, the Monday. Or that's, like, on that Wednesday that it comes out. But that's an interesting question because, like, maybe I should just, like, tell you guys prior let me know. I'll do a poll on my Instagram. Let me know. Um, okay, cool. I'll wrap it up. I feel like I've just been, like, really rambling today, but I've really enjoyed um, getting back on the mic and talking to you guys and hanging out. I'm so excited, like I said, for the rest of the season, um, and I'm just excited for the guests that you guys are going to hear from. They're so great, and I've just been recording so many episodes with people, so I am just having the best time. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. If you aren't already following Girl We Gotta Talk on Instagram, definitely do. Um, it's just Girl We Gotta Talk podcast, and you'll get all the um, Instagram story updates. You can interact with polls and questions like that Q and A we just did. Um, and thank you to everyone that wrote in questions. Sorry if I didn't get to your question. I just like genuinely feel like I need to shut up. Um, <laughs> I just feel like I've been talking nonstop. So maybe we'll do the rest of your questions in the next episode. But thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Bye. Hey guys, thanks so much for listening. Be sure to subscribe to Girl We Gotta Talk on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere you get your podcasts. That way you never miss a new episode. You can also follow Girl We Gotta Talk on Instagram at Girl We Gotta Talk Podcast and on Twitter at GWGT Podcast for live tweeting and all your favorite pop culture updates. If you want to watch full episodes, check out Girl We Gotta Talk on YouTube and find all of your favorite episodes over there. If you like today's episode, head over to Apple Podcasts, hit the five stars or leave a review and let me know what you thought. I seriously love hearing your feedback. It really means the world to me. Thank you guys again so much for listening. Talk to you guys next week. Bye.